Hi everyone, it's Shari here today and I am going to be making this fall card that is all die cuts and no stamping. So to start out with, I'm going to be making some inked up panels. So these are pieces of watercolor paper that are cut down from a 9 by 12 sheet. So I just cut it into quarters. And I'm going to be making a yellow panel, an orange panel, and a red panel. And I'm going to cut a whole bunch of fall leaves out of this. So I'm using Distress Oxide inks to make these colored panels. And I'm going to speed this up so that this video isn't too terribly long. So here for the yellow one, I started with scattered straw. Then I went in with mustard seed. And then I will also add in some wild honey. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors, just kind of randomly placing them on that panel that I have there. And the leaves we're going to cut out, you're just going to get variations in colors. So instead of using one solid piece of cardstock, this is going to give it a little more interest. So I'm also adding some texture to things. So this is just clean water. And I've just tapped my paintbrush and put some water droplets on there. And then I'm going to pick up that ink with a paper towel to add some swatches. I'm going to add some watercolor here too in just a minute. But I went ahead and did all the inking and just the water first. So now I'm on to my orange one that I'm creating. Started with carved pumpkin. And then I've got some spiced marmalade that I'm using there. And then the darkest color I'm using is the ripe persimmon. And again, I'm just going back and forth between my colors to make a nice and smooth. I actually added a little bit of wild honey at the end on this one. I feel like wild honey is kind of a cross between yellow and orange, and it just kind of lightened up a couple spaces that were dark. And again, I'm going to add some clean water with my paintbrush, just tapping it, adding some water droplets, and then I'll pick that up with a paper towel to create some lighter spots. And then finally, here's the red panel that I'm creating. I'm using candied apple, barn door, and then I will go in with some really dark aged mahogany. Now, these panels look very smooth. The color doesn't have a lot of variation. But once I get my leaves cut out, I'm actually going to go in with some regular distress inks and then kind of give the edges some definition once my shapes are cut. So here's that aged mahogany, and you'll see it's much, much darker. So I'm being very light-handed with that. I don't want too much of it because I still want kind of a bright red. It'll go better with the yellow and the orange I've already created. But then I can go back in with those other reds and sort of blend out that aged mahogany a little bit so that it doesn't overpower things too terribly much. And be sure to clean off your craft mat between each of the colors so you don't pull in. That's why I started with yellow first, actually, so I didn't accidentally get some red into my yellow. But I did clean off my mat every time. So now that I have all those initially started, now I'm going to add some of that liquid stardust. So shake it up really good. I'm just going to put a little dab on my craft mat, and then I'm going to add some water to it. And then I'm going to add some of these sparkly droplets to each of these panels. So this is just a glittery mix. It doesn't have a color to it, so it'll kind of pick up the color of each of the panels. And you can see here why I did this all at once after I had my panels made, so that I don't have to make my little mix of sparkle every time. In addition to the sparkle watercolor, I'm going to add some gold. So I've just got some metallic gold watercolor here. I've made it really soupy so I can pick that up and tap it everywhere. And I can just add it to all the panels at once. You can see I've just put two of them right next to each other. And just make a nice even little speckles. I'm using a small paintbrush on this one so that the specks of gold are very small. And I'm using the gold to kind of tie into some gold glitter paper that I'm going to use on this card. So now that I've got each panel done and I've let them dry, that's the key, make sure it's dry. You can see all that nice sparkle that each one has. 
I'm just going to cut out as many leaves as I possibly can out of each of these. So I'm going to have a whole lot of leaves. I'm not going to use them all in this card, but I'll have them to use to make more cards later. So I'm just making the most of each panel. And I'm actually using some post-it note tape to kind of hold this configuration of leaves together. And then I can just take all of them at once and move them to each panel, cut all those leaves, and then I can deal with what's left up there that doesn't have any cut out of it. So you can see there, then when they're all taped together, I can put them on each one just the same. So I've cut out all the leaves I can out of each one. And then here's what I was talking about. Now that they're cut out, I can go in with some distressing and define the edges a little bit and give them a little more color. And then you can see their shapes a little bit better too, which you couldn't really do this until they're cut out. So, and I'm using the regular distressing to do this. So I'm using Wild Honey on the yellow ones, which was the darkest of the yellows that I used. But you can see how that kind of defines the shape and gives each one a little more variation in their color. So I'm doing the same for the orange and I'm using that right persimmon. And this is again, a regular distressing, not an oxide. And I actually went through and I did all the leaves, even though I'm not using them all. I wasn't sure which shapes of which colors I was going to use, so I just went ahead and did them all, and then they'll be ready for another project down the road. And then for the red ones, I'm using the candied apple. This also, because this is a brighter red, will brighten them up. Um, I didn't want to use that aged mahogany, even though that's the darkest color I used for the oxides. I thought that would make them a little too dark, and that orange and that yellow is very, very bright. So I wanted to keep my colors bright. So here is my big pile of leaves, and they're just so pretty. This would make cool, like, table scatter, too, I think. So I have cut that new rainforest cardstock with the tiny polka dot backdrop. And then I've cut a gold panel and it's going to go underneath it. So this was kind of inspired by actually a sticker I saw somewhere that had this kind of dark teal color and a gold foil polka dot on it. Um, but I thought, how could I recreate that in a card? And this is what I came up with. So I just put a lot of glue on this so that it's sure to stick to that glitter paper really well. Using liquid glue on glitter paper is much better than a dry adhesive. It sticks really well. It's going to get in those glitter grooves in there. And then I just usually put a clear block on top till it kind of dries a little bit so it keeps it flat and it doesn't pop up until it's nice and dry. And then I'll put this on a card base. So I've got a card base here and I'm just adding some adhesive all around all the edges and then a lot through the middle. And then I'm just going to line it up and stick that front panel that I created onto my card base. Make sure it's good and stuck down. And I actually used a cream colored card base on this one because I thought it went well with the Ball colors I had going on. I also cut an outside in stitch circle. Actually, it's not an outside in stitch circle. It's just one of the stitch circles that fits with that for you scripty sentiment very well. And then now I'm going to build up my sentiment. So I'm going to cut a whole bunch out of the same rainforest cardstock. I'm going to stack them, but the one that's on top is going to be cut out of the gold glitter. So I'm just going to cut out like five or six of these. And then we'll stack them on top to make a really cool dimensional sentiment. So now that I've got the, all those cut out, you can see the gold one. That's going to be the one that's on top. So I'm just going to use liquid glue and just trace around each of these. Just very quickly, you don't need a lot of glue. You could actually do dots around it too. 
I feel like this is like practicing your cursive almost when you trace this with the glue to do this. And the more I do it, the faster I get at it. So you just put a little bit of glue every time and stack them up. And like I said, I did four or five of these, I believe. You just need to do as many to get the thickness that you want. And then once you've got them all stacked, you can just finish it off by putting that gold foil one on top. And it kind of creates this cool look since I'm using all the same colored cardstock that that gold foil is just going to kind of float above. You could also use a different colored cardstock for the ones that you stack if you wanted to see that color from the side. But I just wanted it all to match and the things to really stand out on this to be the gold glitter and those brightly colored leaves. So now I'm going to add this die cut to the circle. So I'm just putting the glue on the back of all those ones that I've stacked. And then I will put a clear block on top of this too, just till it dries a little bit. It doesn't take very long for that glue to dry enough to be sticky, but this, just make sure that it remains nice and flat while it dries. So I put a little bit of foam adhesive on the back of that circle once it was nice and set. And then I'm gonna put that on my card base. And this will lift the circle up a little bit, which will be easy to tuck my leaves underneath. So here is me figuring out the leaf placement. I kind of had a plan when I started, but I wasn't sure. I sort of played with this with some die cuts that were sitting on my desk. You can see my phone is sitting there in the bottom corner. And I do that a lot. I kind of lay stuff out and I'll take a picture and then I'll look at my picture for a reference. But in the end, it kind of ended up different than what I had taken a picture of anyway. So I'm just working around, playing with the different shapes, and the colors until I get it looking the way that I want it to look. And once I get them all in place, then I'm just going to use liquid glue to stick them down right where they were. And since that circle's popped up, I have no problem tucking these in behind. So. I like this method and you make sure that that foam adhesive is far enough off the edge so that you can do this and you don't have to try and place your leaves before placing the circle because it might be hard to get their placement. This way you can kind of see better where to put them. So now that I've got all my leaves on there, you can see all the extra leaves I have for another project. So I'm just going to set those aside and then here is the finished card. I just think it's really pretty and a really cool and different fall color combination. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.